wouldn't you agree that most often than not, it is not the person's dishonesty that rots them out? That sooner or later, that behavior would catch up in their lifestyle, discrediting them from their future transactions, if, if you would say. I mean, it does not take a genius to figure someone out. Sooner or later, that person would be caught. Take, for instance, this one coupon taxi driver from the airport the other night. The, stan the standard charge the standard charge as written on their chart from the airport to our place, all right, is only 610 pesos. And yet that driver ch charged us 900 pesos. I was very much, I very much wanted to call the airport and raise this concern. And yet I, uh, I really thought, would this be worth the time and effort? You would say, you could say, I was wrong. This needs to be corrected. And if we think this deeper, are we just complaining because this dishonest act done to us, all right, affected us primarily? And we need comp compensation, all right, as justified by that dishonesty. Or are we complaining about this in general that this is on, this is a, this is a dishonest act, and this should not be allowed? Will be will we be both the victim and the judge? Now, you see this link of events. This proves to show that a dishonest act is not and will never be an isolated act or event. Hi. This is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. Okay, so today we will be taking the uh, biblical text from the ESV diadem. It is really sad to see that people of today's generation are so drawn to dishonesty because of greed. Greed because people are so corrupted by this world with materialism and ambition for ambition for what? For worldly desires. There is nothing wrong in wanting a better life, but not by stepping on someone else. Mostly many are drawn to dishonest acts because they are oriented to the fact that they have to outweigh, to outsmart, to outthink others. And that is a very nasty attitude. And I would tell you that God, for one, abhors that sick human attitude. Let's take a look at Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19, where it says, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breeds out lies and one who sows discord among brothers. And most of all, also here in Proverbs 12, Proverbs 12, verse 22, where it says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are His delight. And this would actually brings, bring us to the fact that, in uh, as it is written in Proverbs 19, verse 1, it says, Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in, speed, in speech and is a fool. You would definitely see here in Scripture that any form of untruthful acts are an abomination to the Lord. 
any acts that corrupt the truth is, very, is a very grave mistake against God. For one, because God himself is the absolute and objective truth. To deny truth is to deny God. And we all know that what happens when we don't have God in our lives. There would be no true peace in our lives. Everything becomes temporary and our lives become fruitless. The heaviness of everyday toil would become so apparent and obvious that we would barely lift our feet, all right? And all the time, we will feel heavy and uneasy. That is because you don't have God. You don't have the God who saves in your life. Every lie is the same, whether it be a full-blown lie or a white lie, because a lie will always be a lie, and nothing good comes out of it. For true life, all right, a true and lasting life can only be found in the path of truth, no matter what, when your life is totally grounded on truth, as a matter of fact. What would even make you lie in the first place? What would even make you lie? Why would you lie in the first place? Sometimes a lie simply covers the truth because someone is afraid to be exposed, afraid that the people might know the truth about them. Why would one be actually afraid that the people might know the truth about them? Because if people know the truth, they would not believe you anymore. You will be discredited right from the start. You won't have their attention, sympathy, and love, and any, any attention or whatever, for that matter. So you started to live a life of pretense, a lot of lies. That would then be a lie after a lie after a lie. There, there will come a time that you would not even know the truth anymore because of so many lives, because of so many lies you have made. You would live comfortably with lies, despising the truth. You would not know the truth even when the truth stares you right at the, when the truth stares you right at the face. One perfect example is in the Gospel of John. Gospel of John that is in 18, 18, chapter 18, verse 38, where um, Pilate actually was, uh, was talking with Jesus. That's John 18, verse 38, where it says, Pilate said to him, to Jesus, what is truth? What is truth? Well, Jesus is the absolute truth, the ultimate Godhead made flesh. The Messiah prophesied to be born as the Redeemer of mankind. Jesus is the only truth to life, to true life, and lastly, to eternal life, which is meant only for those who actually love him. To those, for those who embraces the real truth. But for those who got caught up with a lot of dishonesties, will not actually see and even recognize the truth, no matter how hard they try. You are, you are also set up to the comfort and luxuries of life that you fail to recognize the real face, the real face of truth. The truth does not need to be hard to swallow. To embrace and accept the truth is to embrace your true nature. And what is your true nature? All right. And what is your true nature? And that would be in 1 Corinthians. Let's 
That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20, where it perfectly says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. And also here in Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, where it perfectly says, For you were called to freedom. All right? For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. All right? So even then, you're not your own. For you were once slaves to your own flesh, a slave to sin and darkness, a slave to this corrupt road. Then you were bought with a price. No price is as high as that of the blood of our Lord Jesus. So by his death on the cross, we have become free men, free from the clutches of evil, free from the clutches of evil, of sin, and darkness and at the same time we become a slave to our Lord we are both free and at the same time of our Lord's and this is the absolute truth all right and this is the absolute truth just as what st. Peter said in first Peter first first Peter's chapter 2 verse 16 where he says Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. And as I also uh, read to you earlier, um, what Paul said in Galatians, for you are called to, you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For this is who we are. The fact is we are actually bound by love meant we live for God alone we are never alone for we are created our life our every experience are not truly our own and if we can be honest about ourselves all right st. Paul wrote in Philippians I can do all things through him who strengthens me being honest, especially about ourselves, is being able to embrace that the only reality there is, here is God and here is us. And that we cannot do away without God. And that the course of our very being, and the, and the course and that course of our very being is under God's direction. And it is completely clear, all right? It is completely clear with uh, the prophet Isaiah. Let me share with you what Isaiah wrote, and that is in chapter 64 of Isaiah, verse 8, where it says, But now, O Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. God is the only director of our lives. And that is a fact. And if you want something out of your life, you must learn, you must learn total submission to God. And you must learn to actually embrace that. Because that's the only reality in this world. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, if you learn to accept this, no matter how hard it is, you will definitely find a blissful life more than you ever wanted. 
Let us pray. May we learn to be honest about ourselves, Lord, and embrace the truth that we are nothing without you. May we learn honesty and truth as the only way of life, anointed by you. Pour forth your Spirit upon us so we can actually be your children, lovers of truth, so that we can speak and live what is true. Help us recognize the lies and avoid them so our hearts would not be corrupted and defiled, so we can one day enter our heavenly home pure and holy. Amen. Okay, so uh, before I let you go, before I let you go, uh, brothers and sisters, um, just a quick announcement. Uh, we are, not only are we um, going around the Archdiocese of Manila for our Bible Fellowship, uh, the details will be posted, but at the same time, we would like to inform you that if you are in the area of San Juan, we will be having also a regular schedule of Bible Fellowship here in San Juan. So if ever you are in our area, stop by and be a part of, all, of one of our services, and we promise you, your life will change for the better. Take care and God bless.